Uh, first of all, we'll, we'll start with the FCC's perspective because the two companies did make concessions to get your blessings. From where you sit, what were the specific steps they took to make you comfortable and to make the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, comfortable? Yeah. So my top priority at the FCC has been securing U.S. leadership in 5G, and it's been a top policy focus for the Trump administration as well. And it's a great job story. It's a great story in terms of securing U.S. economic leadership and our national security. And today's announcement, particularly that we're going to see an accelerated build out of 5G covering 99% of the U.S. population, I think that notches another really good win uh, for U.S. leadership in 5G. What does it mean, therefore? Commissioner, that the DOJ is leaning seemingly the opposite direction if Bloomberg reporting is as it stands? Yeah, I can't verify the reporting on that, but what I can tell you is that part of our years-long review at the FCC has been looking at competition issues. And when you look right now, a combined Sprint T-Mobile would have the same size and scale as Verizon and AT&T in terms of customers for the first time. And when you have a third competitor on that scale, what our record showed is there's going to be really big benefits for consumers in terms of the new competition you're going to see, in terms of the build out. And also, if you look at the filing this morning, it talked a lot about in-home broadband. Right now, a lot of consumers across the country feel like they have one choice or no choice for high-speed internet service. And by combining the spectrum holdings of these two companies, a lot more Americans can see fiber-like speeds delivered wirelessly and feel like they have true choice for the first time. So I think that's a great development. Let's make really clear that the DOJ's uh, perspective here is completely separate from the FCC's findings. But having said that, Commissioner, is there any level of coordination at all between the FCC and the DOJ over competition concerns? Did your two offices, for instance, uh, share information with one another at any point? The FCC and the DOJ traditionally uh, coordinate closely during their review process. I can't speak to the specific coordination that took place here. That would have been run uh, out of the chairman's office at the FCC. But when you step back and look at our main goal of how do we get 5G built out across the country, we've been cutting a lot of regulatory red tape. We've been speeding the permitting process. At the end of the day, 5G is going to be built in America's big cities, almost no matter what we do at the FCC. But the big challenge is, how do we make sure every community in the country has a fair shot at next generation connectivity? And right now the commitments that have been secured and that were announced today puts us on an accelerated path to making sure mm. every community sees this build out. Mm. Commissioner Carr, it's interesting that of course you just need three out of five members of the FCC to get this passed, but there are doubters on the FCC, most notably the senior Democrat Jessica Rosenwessel has, been, has serious doubts. What have the doubts been about this deal? For her, is it still about competition, about a concern that prices eventually could rise once the investment, once the build out has finished? Yeah, I can't speak for my colleagues in terms of their positioning on this, but when you look at some of the commitments that came in, you mentioned concerns about price. There was a commitment that came in about not increasing prices. They put in a commitment about not raising prices for 5G service. So I don't think at the end of the day that was an issue that uh, gave me much pause given the commitment that was put in place and given the increased build out that we can see from a combined company. I think that's going to benefit Americans. You know, for years, Commissioner Carr, it seemed as if the government wanted four players in the telecom space. Um, in addition to uh, at and and Verizon, you have T-Mobile and Sprint. It just wasn't comfortable with the idea of three big players in telecoms. What's changed? Is it because the priority of building out 5G infrastructure that requires three big players? Yeah, I've never articulated a set number in my mind that I think we need in this country. For me, the, the litmus test is always going to be the public interest, and first among that is competition. Again, we have the potential to see a third wireless provider for the first time of the same scope and the same scale as Verizon and AT&T, and that could lead to a scope of competition and a type of competition that we haven't seen before. And you mentioned 5G. I think that's another important point. We're at an inflection point in wireless and in internet access generally where you need increased investment, increased build out to realize 5G everywhere. And I think this combination, the FCC's record shows we're going to get a type of 5G service that independently the two companies uh, wouldn't have been able to replicate.
What if the deal doesn't get mm. through? What if, therefore, we do see the DOJ overrule it? We do see the attorneys general perhaps overrule it. What then for 5G? Yeah, I can't speak to what their ultimate decision is going to be, but I think the commitment that's put in place locks in over an accelerated period, three years, solves a challenge that we've been working to solve, which is making sure rural America sees the benefits of next-gen deployment within three years. But if it doesn't, if, if, say, it doesn't happen, if this deal doesn't happen, what then? Well, there's a significant delta between the deployment plans that have been announced by both providers independently, ah. Sprint announcing, I think, a handful of 5G cities, versus the deployment that they're now committed to. And it's backed up not just with uh, sort of general statements or uh, data. There's going to be drive tests to make sure that this is built out across the country. So I think that's a real significant win uh, for the FCC. I think it's a significant win, frankly, for the Trump administration in terms of promoting U.S. leadership. Uh, so I think that would be a step in the right direction to keep heading down this path.